I started singing uh, when I was three. Um, started writing songs in the third grade. By the ninth grade, I had my own group. <laughs> and this was in the deep south where I only had a dream because there you don't see anybody. You, you, when I was a kid, you only saw or heard a few people on the radio. Mm -hmm. I would, my first music was country music because that's all the music they played right. when I was six, seven years old. And then um, late at night, they would play black music. Mm -hmm. Late at night, out of a out of a place called WLAC Nashville, Tennessee, John Richburg, <laughs> and he would play. Oh my God, he played Sam Cooke, and that was it. Oh my God. Um, to this day, he's like my favorite favorite singer. Um, um, by the time I was fifteen, though, I was in the tenth grade, and there was a disc jockey in in Mobile, Alabama, who heard me singing and he started, he wanted to be a manager. You know, from the country, I didn't even know what a manager's job was. Right. But he started taking me, uh, I'm 15 years old. He said, I'm gonna go take you to see the greatest entertainer in the world. And he took me when I was 15 years old to see James Brown. Oh, that changed awesome. my life forever. So hmm. This is what I gotta do. Hmm. This is what I gotta be, I gotta do, I gotta be this on stage. So James Brown was the first real concert I went to see. That's awesome. And then, uh, then that fall, that same summer, he took me to see the Motown Review. They came to Mobile, Alabama, and they had to stay in the black hotel because the white hotels wouldn't take them. Mm -hmm. So we had one major hotel, and it was called the uh, Baby Grand. And, and before the show, he took me to the hotel to meet them, you know, when they were hanging around and getting ready to go to the show. So I met, I'm 15, I met Stevie Wonder, who was 13. I met Smokey hmm. Robinson and, 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 and the Temptations and Mary Wells. And I met all these people when I was 15 in Mobile, Alabama. That's so cool. And uh, it was just unbelievable to me because being a young kid, I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna meet these people. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm here pulling corn and shaking corn and pulling potatoes on on a farm, but I had a dream, and that dream took me to see these people, and then it initiated a deeper dream. Like, you know, this might be possible. Yeah. This might be possible that I could really make. I could have a career. Yeah. It was after after graduating from high school. I lied about my age and went to this club. <laughs> I went to this club it was called the King's Club. And it was in, still in Alabama. And the guy heard me sing and hired me. That was my very first. Of course, I had been singing in church, you know, every Sunday. But this was my first gig. <clears throat> I think I made like $45 a night. I didn't care. I was singing. Yeah. I was singing. So, um... I did that and then I, I, I met, no, 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 before I did that and then my cousin came from New York to visit and he talked to my parents and then let me go back to New York with him. He says, Brenda's a star, man, I, 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 I can help her. She's got to go where the place is. She's got to go to New York. So I <laughs> went to New York. I wrote a short story. It's called A Short Trip to New York. But I went to New York, girl, and uh, I couldn't get arrested. I would go to the clubs, and I said, I want to sing, and they just, nobody would let me sing. Nobody. And so I, I got to eat. So I, I, I got a job. I got a job because they thought I was a Latino. And it was working in a factory downtown in Manhattan, sewing sequences on those pretty gowns that we wear. Uh -huh. Well, those each one of those sequences has to be put onto the material. Wow. I said, I'm going home. I went back to Mobile, and the mo the minute I went to Mo the night I got back, I met my husband. And we moved to Chicago. So uh divorced, and make a long story short, divorced two two years after that. Of course, I had my beautiful daughter, Michelle, and um went back uh well, I went to Chicago. 
And there I joined Operation Breadbasket and Jesse Jackson. I wanted to be a part of something. I figured if I join the choir or something, at least I can sing, you know, keep my chops up. And I did that. And uh, hey, from there, I became a part of the movement, the civil rights movement. And um, from there, I met, started writing songs will continue writing songs, but I started writing songs with Jesse Jackson's brother, Chuck Jackson. That's how I met Jerry Butler, and my career really began by writing a song with Chuck, him taking the song to Jerry, and Jerry says, I like the song, but I like the singer too. So Jerry and I became a duet and had gold records and traveled around the world and uh, came out to do Soul Train. You can always look that up. <laughs> when I did Soul Train, I'm staying here. I'm not going back to Chicago. <laughs> so I stayed here. I, the weather was so beautiful. Chicago, LA, 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 LA. It's gonna be LA. So I stayed here and um, started working uh, a little bit. Uh, it was it was funny because I couldn't seem to get any work. Being an artist, it's it's so different being an artist and being called a session singer. They wouldn't call me. So I was basically girl starving out here and then i, I uh, started doing some called casuals that's where you you um you know sang the, the the songs of you know at weddings and and stuff like that and great band and great singers so i met three young ladies that became my sisters cynthia bass wendy smith sydney uh Sydney, what's this? Davis, and your mama, Teresa. Um, for, for many years and after that, of course, I, I was always a writer, always been a writer, and started having some sets as a writer, writing for songs for major artists. I've written songs for Prince, Mavis Staples, um, Bobby Womack, The Manhattans. Aretha Franklin, Ray Charles, all of them have recorded my songs. So I uh, continue to work and since putting my own band and my own groups together and just continue to work. And it's, when you can sing, you find ways to diversify what you do. As a writer, as a, now I, I teach vocals. Um, I teach songwriting. I taught songwriting for Quincy Jones years ago. And then um, I started personal, uh, taking personal students for singing and songwriting, that's what I do now. And um, got some stuff recorded, got a lot of stuff in the future. But I just say, if you got a dream, you got to stick to it no matter what it looks like. I mean, I'm a little girl in the country fields of Alabama, and I've come to not only meet these people, but work the same stages as these people. And I'm still in awe. I'm, I'm still like, Wow, I'm on the stage with Diana Ross. Wow, I'm on the stage with someone. It's it, keep the excitement and keep keep your heart young and keep your heart open and and always be excited for what you're doing. The minute I open my mouth to sing, I'm still excited. I'm still excited. I get so excited I talk too fast. Let me slow it down. <laughs> I still get excited, <laughs> and 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 it's it's been amazing to watch you grow up i mean oh my god i mean your dad of course he was in the fold with all the rest but he was our brother and uh he was one of the greatest singers ever 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 and he was funny oh my god i can think of things about him now and just laugh until i'm crying I'm <laughs> i really can't so I know he's with us all the time. I mean, I can just hear in my ear, in my ear, wake you up a piece of that, wake you up a piece of that. You want a piece of that? Wake you up a piece. <laughs> just, um, it's just well, I, I love you. Any questions? Because I'm yeah, just Yeah, right. yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's really amazing to hear how, how your career has progressed. And it, it sounds like, an adventure like a real fun adventure and like how does being black being a black woman affect your artistry when i joined operation breadbasket reverend jackson jesse jackson took four girls out of the operation breadbasket choir 
which was 126 people. And he would take us, we, he named us the Piperettes of Freedom. He would take us all across the country with a 21-piece orchestra wow. campaigning to get Black officials elected. And we just got indoctrinated into the civil rights movement, and we became the voice of, of the movement. Wherever we went, we sang. And after we sang, we marched. We went door to door to get people elected. We would go from Chicago, the whole entourage, say, go to Cleveland, where Carl Stokes was running for mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we would sing in the, in the morning. We would sing in the rain, and Jesse would speak, and then we would sing, and Jesse would speak, and then we would sing. No matter if it was snowing, raining, we sang on top of buses, flatbed trucks, and then it didn't matter. And then we would go out and march in the streets and then go to people's houses, knock on their doors and say, uh, get up, get dressed, you gotta go vote. We came here from Chicago to help you elect your first black mayor. Mm -hmm. And we did that, we did that and we got Carl Stokes elected, we got Lewis Stokes elected. We got Kenneth Gibson elected in Baltimore, Perrin Mitchell, all your first black mayors. I was standing on that stage. I had walked that whole week getting people to get out and vote. So the movement, the civil rights movement, had a lot to do with me as being a performer who wants to make a difference yeah. with my art. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to inspire and, and let people know that a dream is possible. And it's possible to fulfill that dream. Marvin Gaye told me over 40 years ago, and I always quote it on my shows because he said, it is the duty of the artist to uplift the consciousness of the people. When we can make people more aware of the truth, you know, of, of what we've gone through and how, how, how important it is to know your history then you can write about it and people become more aware. And, 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 and if we don't know where we've been, we don't know how, where we're going. Um, if you had any advice that you would give to your younger self, what would you give? Or is there any, you know, thing about yourself as a younger musician that you were proud of, um, that you're, you know, happy the younger you that you did? My younger me was, I was gonna say, and I pretty, pretty much just said, is have the audacity to live your dream. Mm -hmm. Have the freaking guts to live your dream. I don't care where you come from, where you are, because if that thing inside is driving you, go for it. It won't disappoint you now. And, and another thing, I've been through some hard times, but you know those hard times make me a better songwriter. I have something to say. Yeah. You know, I have, I have experience to talk about. So don't get frustrated if you get a little, you know, and. I got to get to this point, but don't get dis uh, distracted or discouraged. And another thing that I learned, never put an age limit on your talent. Mm. Never put a time limit on your talent. I, I said when I was a kid, I'm like, oh, by the time I'm 25, I'm going to be this or I'm going to be that. Nah, 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 nah. You came here to be a singer. You're going to be a singer when you're nine to five, you know? So don't, don't rush to try to put a time in. You just work toward that goal and the universe is gonna do just, just what it needs to do to put you in the right place for you to do your thing. That's amazing. Shirley Horn was a great piano player and singer. Um, she sang, a, you know, and some people knew her, but it was when she turned like 72 or something like that. She became big, but she had been making a living the whole while. Mm -hmm. But girl, and I'm not saying it's 70, I'm just saying. Right, we can't choose she spent the last, Her life was full and rich going everywhere. And they said, oh, that's the great Shirley Horn. We've never seen her, but that's her. Hmm. You know, it was just amazing. I went to see her myself and I was like, wow, she's amazing. And she's been doing it. She said, I've been making a living at this my whole life. Now you guys want to say I'm great, but I've been doing this my whole life. Yeah, that's some real stuff. That yeah. is the artistic 
journey and career it's a process it's not it is a process to drive to. and um and when you least expect it that, that's right. that energy comes yeah that's right i never i never i didn't i didn't think three years ago that somebody was going to say oh your life is a movie we're going to do a, a film on you uh, you and your your friend uh, patty henley because she was in the movement with me we met in the movement that is it, super. Uh, it is super i'm like duh you know that's so awesome. Yeah. And really? so, because putting a time on a lemon on it, and a lot of people say, you know, in the, in the, you know, I'm going to be great and I'm going to be, I'm going to be famous and I'm going to be rich. They have put time, well, I got to have this by this time. I got to have, but your spirit is eternal. It doesn't know how old you are. It knows what you're doing. Wow. 